G'day, KC here, and how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, we're going to continue with the design of the clock and go through spacing of the gears. So to space the gears, we come back to my spreadsheet that you saw before. And I don't know if you remember this column, the pitch radii, radio or radius, radio plural. Um, I didn't mention that in my previous video, but now that comes into play. And that's really the um, radius of where the gears will actually touch. So that's what you need to space them distance apart so that um, they'll mesh and run cleanly. So what I've done is I've added these numbers to the spreadsheet. I'll show you how they work. So if you have a look across here where the teeth are, uh, 16 is a 16, and those are the numbers which are just pulled from that table there. 8, 8, 8, 16, 40, etc. So you can just see they match straight across to <clears throat> the gear train. So how it works is if we take these yellow ones um, or orange, so that 8 is driving that 16. So that 8 is driving that 16 and if you take the radius of the 8 and the radius of the 16 and add them together you get 35. So if I just click on that cell and highlight it you'll see what it's doing is it's just adding those two together and so that is if I draw a circle with a diameter of 35.9 um, the 8 gear center will be at the center and the center of the 16 can be anywhere on that circle and those gears will mesh so I'll show you how that works in a, in, a, in a little bit in Fusion when we go across there. Um, similarly, if I look at these green ones, you've got the 8 driving the 40. So you've got the 8 driving the 40. We come across in the circle. Um, if I just highlight that, 8 and 40. Um, that's what you get, 69.9, which means if you draw a circle either around the center of the 40 or the 8, um, the other gear, as long as it's on that diameter, those two gears will mesh nicely. All right, so let's move across to Fusion and I'll show you how that works. Okay, so we're moving back to Fusion and um, I've just opened a file temporary, but let me just show you how that works. So the first thing we need to do is um, let's draw our drawings. So we just need an origin point to sketch. So the first one is our 8 to 16 and we said that that was going to be 35.9. So if I just grab a circle, diameter is 35.9. Okay so and so that means that our 16 tooth gear can be anywhere on there. So let's say we're going to go up at a I don't know, a 45 degree angle and so that means that that's actually where we want that gear to be but it could actually be anywhere so let me just trim that so that's our first two gears and then we said the second was an 8 to a 40 so we said that that had to be a 69.9 .9 diameter circle so let's grab that, we draw a circle and we need 69.9 and let's say we want that to be, I don't know, um, straight up or back on the horizontal. So let's draw a line from there back to horizontal over there. Okay, 
So now we know that if we position the gears, they should actually work from there to there, and then from that one across to that one. So let's uh, finish the sketch and let's bring the gears in. So in the previous video I showed you how to make all the gears and so I made a whole lot and they're all sitting um, in files that I can just pull in. So we had to start with an eight tooth. So let's insert our eight tooth gear. So there's our eight tooth gear. So I just grab it, place it at the center. Yes, and let's stick it in. And there you go. So that's our first gear that we've got, which is our eight tooth. Now, because our calc says we've got to place a, our 16 on that radius from the spreadsheet. So we actually want to put a 16 there. So let's see if that'll work. So I'm going to insert. So, okay. Put it in the same spot. So what we need to do is just move it to its new spot. So we want to move that gear. The origin point will be that. And the second point will be that. And those should mesh nicely. So what I'm going to do is just rotate that gear. Slightly. Um, so if I rotate that gear, and there you go. So they'll actually mesh quite nicely. So zoom out a bit. And if you have a look at that, there you go. Those two gears will actually work quite well together. All right, now our second set of gears was an eight and a 40. Now obviously they can't work in the same plane, so what we're gonna do is put them on top. Um, so then this will become a compound gear. So I grab the eight again. I could have just copied that eight that was there. But this is just showing you the principle of how I do this. So there's actually two gears sitting here now because they're both here. So let's just move that second one. Um, so we select it, we want to move that one. Um, origin point. Because I want to put it on top, I'm picking that as the origin point and I'm going to pick the top of this one as where I want it to go because then it'll actually put it on top. Um, so I really like Fusion because it's quite, quite clever like that. So there you go, now I've got a compound gear and the work we did earlier was that we need to, if we take that 8 which is driving a 40, we can put the 40 anywhere on the circle and it'll mesh well with that eight. So again, let me just uh, insert. And uh, okay, again, puts it in the middle. That's why I always wanted to come in at the, at the center. So easy enough, we're just gonna move that. Um, we're going to move it from that point and we're going to move it to that point and you should see it meshing now it's clashing at the at the bottom there so we just move it to the side and we move that up uh, we click ok oh i forgot to rotate it so let's just do that quickly we're going to rotate it about that and this is just to show you that the gears mesh. Uh, maybe three degrees. There you go. All right. So now, if you have a look there, we've got a bit of a gear train. So we've got the eight driving the 16, which is joined to that eight, which is driving this 40. And that's exactly the gear train that we needed from the spreadsheet. So if I turn the sketches off, uh, I'll zoom out a bit.
and there you can see so those are the ones on the bottom and then at the next level you've got the next two gears and you just continue like that and that's how you I build up the um, well, firstly, that's how I find the, the holes on the base plate where I want to put the pins or the screws. And that's how I also know that the gears are going to mesh. So it's all in that spreadsheet first, and then it makes actually designing it very easy. Um, because, I mean, I could move this gear anywhere I want. Um, so it doesn't have to be there. Um, let me just show you if I want to move that around. Um, I can grab that gear, I'm going to rotate it, I'm going to rotate it about this gear and I can move this gear anywhere and it'll always um, be driven. I can you know, come back and put it on top of that one. We, will, we can put it there if we want and we just say OK. So as I say that, that gear can be anywhere on that radius. diameter should I say so there you go so and that gear train will still mesh perfectly so here I'm designing the base I didn't like a big solid base um, I like the idea of sort of skeleton steampunk so um, as you'll see here um, I did an initial sketch of how I wanted to cut the base out and started cutting that out um, I've already done the holes um, for where my gears need to be, as I showed a bit earlier. And so then I started, this is how I started uh, making the base. That's for a stepper motor down the bottom there. And that's how I started making the base. Now you can make it any shape you like. Later on I changed those um, four spokes for three spokes. Um, and I made the hole in the middle um, quite a lot bigger just to so that it make, makes the clock more see-through. So after I've designed each component, the base and then all the gears, I usually have a file that I call assemble and it, I assemble each item on. So let me just run you through that file and uh, show you what it looks like. That's the base, putting on the hour gears now. And let's just make sure that everything fits and there's no clashes. Putting the planetary gear now, sun and the planets, it's the carrier, and then the outer dial. Uh, moving up, this will be the minute hand. is just for show because it looked a bit empty so I added an extra gear and again just doing the planetary gear system now and then coming down now to the seconds and I was adding extra holes for gears just for extra show they don't do anything they just spin because it looked a bit empty and to hide where the motor was. And the last uh, planetary gear system. And that's really what it looks like. So that's how I put the clocks together. Thank you all for watching. And take care and God bless. Thanks again for watching and be sure to like and subscribe as it helps the channel to grow.